Coming up, annual dues have been announced for 2021. We're going to tell you what we think. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined via Skype this week by my good friends from the DVC store, Mr. Jerry Saito. Hello, everybody. The uh, man behind DVC fan, Mr. Paul Krieger. What's up, everybody? And, of course, Webmaster Doc from the boards, Mr. Rob Lindsay. Hello. And Skype isn't switching fast enough, so trust me, they're there. You heard their voices. They'll be there. Well, welcome, folks, to the show. Hope your week is off to a good start. Before we get into it, uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, if you are considering purchasing uh, joining uh, Disney Vacation Club, please give our friends over at dvcstore.com a visit or a call, 1-800-550-6493. They can help you with all aspects of that. If you want to try before you buy and rent some DVC points, they can help you with that as well. Over on their website, dvcstore.com, or on the phone, one 800 550 Nine three, so um, we uh, you know, a lot of speculation in the months leading up to the normal annual release of uh, or announcement of the dues for the following year, and a lot of speculation was around: would there be any uh, rebates or or discounts or changes because DVC resorts were closed? Oh, and you know what? I'm so sorry, I forgot to introduce. Our producer, Mr. Corey Fiascanaro. Welcome home. Who loves to have that microphone right in front of his face. There even, it goes. Even though I told him before the show to move it. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Um, so, I, yeah, from now on now, you have to have that microphone attached to the front of your face wherever you go. Perfect. Okay? That's yeah. your punishment. Um, so, anyway, talking about the dues. Wondered if there was going to be any kind of uh, anything different as a result of... The fact that resorts were closed for for almost four months um, earlier this year due to COVID. Um, And, of course, no, because these are 2021 dues. These are projected, based on projected expenses for the resorts uh, for next year. But, uh, Paul, you had these, uh, you had the the dues up on our site, dbcfan.com. Uh, like literally within seconds of them being announced. And you've been gauging a lot of the reaction. So what is it you've been seeing and hearing from from members about this? I have my own thoughts, but I'll I'll start with this. So I think overall members are a little bit just, uh, especially newer members, are a little bit confused with this process and with what we're seeing. So as you said, Pete, we saw our projections come out for 2021 annual dues last week. Um, And across the board, there are increases. Uh, It's around a 5% increase this year, which is pretty much on par with what we've seen in the past with annual dues. Um, And it is a projection of what Disney Vacation Club plans to spend in 2021. Um, Reactions on the DVC Fan Facebook group and in our comments on DVCFan.com mainly just a lot of people very confused with why we're not seeing reductions related to COVID, why there was no uh, talk of, of what happened this past year um, and how in the world we could see these increases in 2021 as a result of what we're dealing with right now. And, uh, you know, I, okay. A lot of the criticism that I have heard that I absolutely agree with kind of comes back to what we were talking about uh, back in March and April and May about the lack of communication coming out of DVC management, namely uh, Terry Schultz, who's the senior vice president of Disney Vacation Club, um, kind of maybe getting out in front of some of this. Um. There should be, I mean, there, there there should be some adjustment. Let's be honest. There should be some adjustment to 2020 dues because the resorts were closed. Now, I understand 
that they had expenses while that was going on. But you're not going to tell me that the expenses were the same as they were as if you'd had full resorts. That that's a little bit. So I, I, I agree that we should have expected either some, even a small token uh, rebate on our 2020 dues or an explanation from them as to why not. But instead, they just kind of dump these dump these dues. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and the increases were not in and of themselves, you know, unusually, uh, unusually, uh, high. I mean, well, okay. Hilton head. <laughs> yeah. Poor Rob, uh, 9.6% uh, increase. Uh, dues went from $9 and 10 cents a point to just under $10, $9 dollars 97 cents a point. Uh, uh, Vero Beach, the big winner, an almost 11% increase on Vero Beach from $10.12 a point to $11.23 a point. That is if you purchased after 1996. Before 96, your increase was a much more reasonable 10.67%. But still, those people are only paying... Uh, eight dollars and eighty-five cents next year, um, so it's a two two dollar and forty two dollars and thirty-eight cent difference per point. Um, now, what I find interesting about that, I would expect that if either of those two places had been hit by a hurricane this year, but they weren't. Vero Beach certainly wasn't. Uh, Florida, knock wood, has been very fortunate this hurricane season. I uh, can't say the same for other parts of the U.S. But um, so what do you think is behind? We'll start with that, guys. What do you think is behind the Vero Beach and Hilton Head increases? Because those are those are significant. One, one well, Hilton problem, Head, uh, oh, sorry, go let's ahead. go to Rob. Let's go to Rob Lindsay. One problem with both of those locations is that they don't have any economy that the Walt Disney World resorts have as far as laundry facilities, transportation. Well, neither of them has a lot of transportation, but laundry facilities comes to mind as the biggest, biggest uh, thing. Um, even the, the supply chain for housekeeping supplies and stuff, there's, there's a greater expense because they don't get the same benefit of, of, of numbers that they do at the Walt Disney World resorts. Uh, but st you really think that that's a that that justifies an eleven percent increase. No, I don't. Insurance is some of. I think there's a lot of uh, hidden factors uh, that create those higher costs because they've been like that for years now. For a while, Hilton Head uh, was similar to the other to the Walt Disney World resorts, and and then all of a sudden we uh, the, the dues started going up there because of. Uh, some maintenance issues. The, you know, again, it's it, it's all weather related, but it's certainly not been hurricane for the last couple of well, the last four years now. So, yeah, I mean, and you know, we know that uh, a big part of the uh, a big part of the dues increases every year is about offsetting the cost of bus transportation, and those who bought in at Riviera. You know, when, when, when Riviera first announced their dues, we were all like, wow, that's really high to start out with. I mean, Riviera started $8.31 a point, roughly. Um, we thought that was pretty high, but proving to be pretty good because Riviera doesn't rely as much on bus service. Having the Skyliner there, their increase was less than 1%, 0.9%. Went from 830, 831 a point to about 838 a point. Um, so not a big increase there at Riviera. Uh, so that Alani as well. Um, Alani only went up by 0.27% uh, to $8.35 uh, a point. Um, and I think those were the only two that were under 1% uh, in, the, uh, in the point category. I'm honestly surprised that we saw the increases that we saw at all. At any of at any of the resorts, I know we've had this discussion briefly before. 
And Paul was in the camp of, you know, expect to see some increases. And that's obviously what we saw. But I mean, I understand we have to, they had to buy things for new sanitation measures. They had to obviously purchase more Purell. But we also had a lot of layoffs. Uh, we have no Moonlight Magics going on right now. A lot of things that would go. Okay, again, we it's very, very important. We're clear about this. Moonlight Magic and those perks are not, not paid for by dues. Oh, right. They are paid for by direct purchases from DVC. They are not allowed to use this money for member perks. This is for the maintenance of uh, of the resorts. Um, and while there have been layoffs, we don't know exactly how much of that impacted uh, uh, DVC per se yeah. uh, uh, in terms of the resorts, but also um, remember that uh, Disney is uh, uh, Disney is progressively upping minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour at the resorts, and we know we're going to see some of that uh, reflected. We have been seeing some of those increased salaries reflected in the dues. Um, Jerry, what uh, what kind of reaction on the resale side have have you seen uh, to the increased dues? Anything at all? Uh, it's it's still slowly filtering, and I do think some more sellers are are inclined to sell because of the increase. They're a little bit surprised at what has happened. Uh, they expected again uh, either not much of an increase or even a rebate, as you mentioned. And uh, you know, it, I was kind of surprised when I saw what the uh, maintenance fees were going to be. But you know, after digesting it for a bit, you're you guys are absolutely right that it's. A projection for next year's cost. If anything, they, they they should give a rebate for 2020, and I'm not sure that's going to happen or not. Does anyone know if that if they're going to offer any kind of rebate for this year? We don't know There's anything, been- and the reason we don't know anything is because Terry Schultz doesn't communicate with the membership. And I got to be honest, man, it really is pissing me off that there. Okay, you think you'd learn? You would have learned after the beating you took publicly. In March and April, about the fact that you're crappy with communicating, that you might want to, you, you might have learned something from that, and started like being better about communicating with the membership. Because at this point, and I don't believe this is true, I really don't. I've met the woman; I think she's a very nice lady. I don't believe this is true, but the lack of communication can easily be interpreted as I really don't give a crap about the membership. Because that's what it starts to look like. So, you know, p- perception can be reality. And, and anybody with, you know, a modicum of experience in any kind of executive role knows that. Doesn't matter what's real. It matters what the perception is. And you get in front of that. And it's not like DBC or Terry Schultz or any of these executives don't have a really good role model for that in Josh DeMauro who is a master at it. He's a master at really about managing the perception. You know, when, when the layoffs happened, what did he do? He got on, when he laid off 28,000 people in Florida, he got on a plane, flew out here and started looking people in the face saying, I'm sorry. Not because it was just PR. He, I mean, it's genuine for him, but it's a great way to manage perception. And the okay, my yeah, something. Oh, you know what? Rhino just went live, and I can hear it from my office. Just close the door, please. Um, sorry, just got just like, why do I hear Rhino in my house? Um, so, yeah, welcome to an internet house. Um, so that's been my, you know, that's been my big takeaway right now is the lack of communication coming from. It would have been a very. It would have been a very simple message to put out there, even if they were not ready to say anything about 2020 yet, even if they wanted to wait until the condo association meeting in December to actually say something about 2020, at least just acknowledge what people are expecting. Because again, most members were not prepared, were not, don't fully understand how this works, maybe 100%, but 99% of members are thinking we should get some sort of credit for 2020 and they see these come out and I mean, they they think we're not going to get anything. 
So, and it's very possible we, we still may not. I, I do want to preface that, that, I mean, it's going to be interesting. They're going to have to disclose some of that information and share with us what the 2020 budgets ended up being. Because again, these are projections. Once the year closes, then they'll have the final results and be able to actually tabulate what that information is. And they, they have to disclose and share that with us. So it's going to be interesting to see how they move the money around for 2020. Were there additional expenses related to the cleanliness measures that were implemented and those kind of things? Um, uh, we'll have to wait and see. And I don't, you know, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, who was who was that? Going? I was going to say I, uh, one observation that I did notice, and again, going back on the 2021 dues, I don't think you know the increase is is out of line for a normal year. This is typical. They typically go up three to five percent. In some cases, a little bit higher. In some cases, a little bit lower. But three to five is typically the average. So I think. On 2021, if there was no COVID, yes, these numbers are to be expected. But the again, the COVID, that's going to cause uh, some issues, and hopefully they do a rebate for 2020. But but an observation that I made was the um, the resorts that t- Disney has available for sale, like the Alani, Copper Creek, the Riviera, those are the, the locations that really did not change very much at all, like very minimal increase, less than 1% or oh, just you're over absolutely 1%. Right. So I th- thought that was interesting that direct sale locations didn't have much of an increase. The, the sold out properties, those are the ones that went up a little bit okay. higher. So it's you of- know what, Jerry, you're absolutely right. Let's talk about Copper Creek for a second. I didn't realize this until you said it. Copper Creek, which is actively being sold by Disney Vacation Club right now, their, uh, their uh, annual dues for 2021 went up by 1.92%. From seven dollars and forty-five cents to seven dollars and fifty-nine cents, Boulder Ridge, which is in the same resort, right? It's in the same resort, went up by four point two percent, more than double what the increase was at uh, Copper Creek, from seven dollars and seventy-eight cents to eight dollars and ten cents a point. Uh, but also, like I said, Alani, 0.27%, uh, Riviera, 0.9%. You're absolutely right. Everything they're selling direct uh, right now, actively selling, went up by less than 2%. And everything that they're not selling directly went up by a considerable amount more. And again, I don't have a particular problem with the increase because, as you mentioned, this is in line with normal increases, plus you know, there is more expense right now in terms of the work needing to be done to sanitize every room. Um, I'm sure there's more expenses associated with that, so I don't begrudge them that. My problem, as we were saying before, is the lack of communication. It's not like these people don't follow social media. It's not like these people don't read discussion forums like disboards.com. They read them, believe me. They follow them. So they know what the members are saying. They know what the expectation is. They know people are looking for something as a result of the resorts being closed for four months in 2020. So to not get out in front of that with some kind of announcement along with this, with, the, with dropping the new points, the new, uh, the new dues, again, is just, it, it's, it's almost like a Three Stooges routine. In their management offices, it's like it's like the Three Stooges. She's team captain. She, she's captain for the team that can't shoot straight, and they keep making these same mistakes. And it's really kind of annoying. It's really kind of annoying. Um, what else? Anybody else want to comment on any of these? Uh... There was a little good news, dues related, because everybody who owns in owns a deed in December, when the dues statements are figured, is going to get a slight credit for the overestimation of the 2020 property taxes. Hmm. That's going to range from at Old Key West, uh, about nine cents a point up to uh, a beach club is about (coughs) eight cents a point. Animal Kingdom is 10 cents a point. Uh, Bay Lake is 13. Uh, Boulder Ridge is fifteen cents a point. Copper Creek is forty-four cents a point. Damn, Ooh, that's me. Do you have a December use year? Gonna, I do. I that's do. Shut up. Here as yeah, a credit towards the twenty twenty-one dues. 
Oh, that's not. I mean, at least there's something, right? There's something, but that's if you have a December that, that use year. That has happened in the past. There were a few years early on where the dues actually went down because they had mis, uh, computed the misestimated the uh, the property taxes, and the property tax credit was enough to offset the increase for that year. So that early on in, at OKOS, there were a couple of years where the dues actually went down from one year to the next. So how do I get that credit? Does it just automatically come off my next deuce? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Fiasco. An, an, another observation again is uh, some of the, some people always ask, you know, what's the best value in terms of maintenance fees? So there's also consistency on those resorts, Grand Floridian, Bay Lake Tower, Polynesian, Saratoga Springs. Those are all still on the low end of the annual dues cost. So, you know, if you're considering buying and, you know, well, what's a good value? Those tend to always be consistent. You know, you had mentioned Hilton Head at one point was in that bracket. That was early 2000s that you could actually get Hilton Head at a really good annual cost. But over the years, because of, you know, maintenance issues, uh, insurance costs and so forth, it's gone up. But nonetheless, the consistency is still there on those on those other properties. Do you think do you think, like I said, you know, we were talking about Bureau Beach and Hilton Head getting pretty extraordinary increases in their annual dues uh, in spite of the fact there were no major storms or hurricanes that they need to adjust for. Um, do you think any part of that is because they're trying to discourage resale because people will buy those for the cheap points? I, I personally don't think so. I, I don't. I, what I think is, is I mean, this might get uh, theoretical, but in terms of like global warming and whatever, you know, uh, we went past named storms and then we got into the, the, believe the Greek alphabet. So I think maybe insurance costs are getting, you know, extremely high because Could be. there's more and more storms that are going to come through. And yes, they didn't hit this year, but there's going to be some storms that do. And they're probably anticipating some, some, something like that. But again, speculation, but I think the insurance costs are just outrageous on those, on those waterfront properties. Yeah, that's a good point. That could very well be it. So, all right, well, there you have it, folks. That's our discussion about the 2021 annual dues. Please let us know what you think down in the comments below. We might uh, decide to have another show at some point talking about your reactions. But that will do it for this week's episode of the DVC show, DVC show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next week. Have a great week, folks.